This mouse loves sugar. He loves sugar so much that even after he's eaten and should be pretty full, he crosses a metal platform that gives his feet electric shocks just to get a sweet reward. Sometimes our love of sugar makes us go a little overboard. We've all been in that situation where we've had one cookie and then suddenly the whole pack is gone. And then we crave more. So can you be addicted to sugar? Let's revisit our mouse friend. That brave little guy who risked his life just for some sugar dissolved in water. When he did this, a pathway was lighting up from the hunger and feeding region of his brain to another region important for motivation and reward. He developed a reward-seeking habit. Looking at this pathway is like zooming in on our larger reward processing center. Researchers found that activating it increases compulsive overeating and binge eating behavior. And they found that shutting down the pathway decreased that sugar-seeking behavior. But it didn't stop normal healthy eating behavior, like having dinner. For us, a reward-seeking behavior is going to the fridge or pantry and getting a cookie. We're hardwired to love sugar because it has energy-dense calories. And it keeps activating our brain's reward system. And these behaviours aren't new to research. In an established animal model, rats are food deprived for 12 hours and then they're given 12 hour access to sugar water and food. As a result, they drink a lot of the sugar water, especially when it becomes first available. After a month on this feeding schedule, the rats display behaviours similar to those seen in drug abuse. They binge on the sugar and show withdrawals, cravings, and even depression when it's not there. After this sugar binging, the rats show a similar pattern of brain activity as other rats who are morphine dependent. Many studies have compared sugar addiction to drug addiction because they show similar symptoms, like increased tolerance, withdrawals, and unsuccessful attempts to quit. Could sugar really be as bad for us as drugs? Some experts think so, arguing that sugar is toxic, messing with our hormones and harming our organs. The sugar is toxic argument is mainly related to fructose. It's one sugar primarily found in table sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Fructose can only be processed by our liver, so consuming too much puts a lot of stress on it. It's been suggested that over time this can lead to metabolic syndrome, which in turn can lead to type 2 diabetes. Not everyone agrees with these claims that sugar is evil. Some of the studies that link fructose to health problems have been criticized because in them, animal or human participants consumed way more fructose than most people would. And animals metabolize fructose differently to humans. Studies show that mice and rats convert as much as 50% of fructose into fat, while for humans it's more like 1%. What a fat rat. And it's important to remember that many things, apart from sugar and drugs, can stimulate our brain's reward circuit, like exercise, gambling, and to a lesser extent, fatty foods. It doesn't necessarily mean we're addicted to those things, we just find them pleasurable. It's pretty clear that sugar is an addictive food, but even if you like eating chocolates or donuts every day, it doesn't mean you're addicted. Very few people are. Still, if you're finding it impossible to reduce sugar cravings, doing regular exercise, eating dairy products, or even chewing gum have been shown to help. Whatever you do, just don't cross a metal platform that gives your feet electric shocks to get a sweet reward. It's not gonna end well. If you haven't already, check out my last episode on what sugar does to our bodies. And subscribe to Braincraft. It's pretty sweet.